<clears throat> Good evening, welcome to my laboratory. This is another demo of the Rigol 1054Z scope. And in this demo I'm going to show uh, remote control uh, of the scope over the Telnet LAN connection. And I'm also going to show why one might want to use settings like uh, persistence time and um, average acquire mode with uh, different memory depths. Okay, so uh, here's the scope running. I've got four channels going and signals on all four channels from a little, uh, a little one of these. That thing right there with all the probes sticking out of it is what's producing the signals that you see on the screen now. Okay, and I have the uh, LAN cable connected to the back of the scope, and if we go to the utility menu, input-output setting, LAN configuration, we see that the LAN config comes up and that I have DHCP selected and and it has assigned me an IP address. The, my router has assigned an IP address to the scope. So I go over to the computer and I go, I open a Telnet connection to port 555 at that IP address. Okay, and that gives me the telnet, basic telnet connection to the scope. Now I can use the telnet to send the SCPI commands from the programming guide text uh, over to the scope. And so first, let's see, what will I do first? Okay, first let's change the time base. I'm going to change the time base now. to 10 nanoseconds per division by sending the SCPI command over the telnet. And there you go. Now, I guess you can see that the traces look very thick on the screen there. Let me turn the intensity. Turn the intensity down a little bit. So you can see that the traces are really thick, right? So some people don't like those thick traces. And in fact, it might be easier to read values if you didn't have the thick traces. So now what I'm going to do is go to the Acquire menu and select Averages for the Acquire. Like that. And now you can see that the traces are a lot thinner and nicer looking. Now I'm going to go to the memory depth setting. The screen. Okay, now at uh, 6 megapoints you can see that the traces get uh, really nice and thin. Now watch what happens if I go back to the uh, acquire normal, acquire type normal instead of averages. Okay, now you can see that there's considerable jitter in that signal uh, that was taken care of when we changed the acquire type to averages. And I'm still doing this by remote control. So let's go back to acquire type averages.
and that settled it down a lot. Turn up the display intensity. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the main time base and scale it down so that you see a lot of traces on the screen. We don't quite need that many, do we? Oh, sorry, went the wrong direction. There we go. That's at 100 nanoseconds per division. And now we will enter the delay time base. Like so. And then we can scale the delayed time base. To whatever we like. And now you can see that we have a nice stable signal, but you can still see some flickering and fluctuation in there. So let me give it a little bit of persistence time. Display grading. Time 0.1. And now you can see that that trace is really nice and stable. You can still see that it's live, but it's not flickering, it's not bouncing around, and it's easy to read. Seconds and then we'll go back to the time base delay scale. Delay. And then off. And there we have it remote control and use of averaging and persistence time to get a nice clean signal from a jittery one. Thanks for watching.